Hello everyone. I wanted to make a quick video talking about how to set up tasks for Breath of the Wild and uh, some of the extra things that I've been doing to make tasking a little bit easier. So first off, you're going to want to download this fork of Yuzu made by Monster Druid. I'll have links for all of these in the description. Um, so this is the first thing you're going to want to download. And then you're also going to want to download the task editor, which is this here, which gives you frame by frame script, uh, script where you can put inputs in to be executed in the game. Um, so once you have that set up, oh, and a uh, third thing you're gonna want uh, want before you get started, um, the save state code, which is made by me, um, listed under my old name. I'll have that in the description as well. And then you're also going to want Cheat Engine, because this is going to help us with resetting Link's position and making it so our script can execute consistently every time. Um, so once you have all this downloaded, you can open up Yuzu, and under your copy of Breath of the Wild, you can right-click and go to Open Mod Data Location. So once you do that, this will normally be empty, but you can right click to add a folder. I've added two folders in here. And then each one, I have another folder named Cheats. And then when you click that, you'll have this here. Now this is gonna have the same name as the file that you download from here for the save state code. Um, but when you open this save state code, what's gonna be a little bit different? Um, here I have the save state code from it's this one here. Yeah, here I have the save state code from GitHub, which has every code that is used for the save state, plus a bunch of additional ones down below. Um, but for Yuzu, things are a little different. You're going to want to break each of these up into sections. So for position, you want to copy all of this, make yourself a new text file, let me go back to that. Yes. Um, you're going to want to make yourself a new text file. And then you want it to have the same name that is, this, that is the name of this text document. But once you do that, um, you just paste in that one code. And then your first one is going to be position. And then there, there are four separate codes. But the only ones that I've been using right now are camera and position. Um, so once you have all that set up, now we can actually go into the game. And so once the game launches... See, so I hit continue. I'll just reload in here because this is where I've been testing my most recent script. So the way these two codes are executed is that when you hold D-pad left and plus, it saves your position, camera, hearts, stamina. Um, I think there's a couple other things in there. Um, but, but that's the gist of it. Um, but you'll see the problem on Yuzu is when I try to restore it using plus and d-pad right. It restores everything else. It restores Link's facing angle. It restores the way the camera was facing. But it doesn't restore his position, which is a problem. Because position is by far one of the most important things um, for being able to test a, a script repeatedly. So here's where Cheat Engine comes in, and this is the uh, a little bit more unfortunate part of this situation. So we'll probably find a better workaround for this at some point. But for right now, I need to open up Cheat Engine again. If I can type it in properly. Cheat Engine, yes. And then we're going to hook it to Yuzu. And then 
Here's how you will find Link's coordinate position. So this is, this will work in other places, but this is where I actually have coordinates saved for. Go to Great Plateau Tower. And then, right here on this image, this will be the exact coordinates Link will have every time that you, that you warp to Great Plateau Tower. So I'm going to take, I've copied down the Z coordinate, so I'm just going to use that one. We want to paste that value in. It's an exact value, and it's also float. So we're going to do our first search. And yet, make sure to paste the value last, because I noticed it got rid of the decimal points at the end. So we're going to do our first scan. And just giving it a second to finish up here. Okay, so it's found 3,000 things. Obviously, we don't want to have to search through all of that. So we're going to do unchanged value and do repeat search. And then we're going to let this scan through for a handful of seconds. So you see the number is about half of what it was before. It's going down very slowly. I'm going to hold the ZL button and also move the camera around because that seems to get some of these values to uh, get removed as well. I'm going to let it try to drop around a thousand and then we'll do the next step. Just make sure to not touch the left stick because that's what we're currently scanning for. Okay, it seems to be settling around 1,059 results. Oh, no. Okay, we just lost a few more. Can we get under 1,000? Maybe. And maybe not. 1,026 is pretty close, though. Okay, 1,010, 1,009. Okay, I'm just going to stop the, the repeated scanning here. So we have 1,003 now. Um, so now I'm, I am going to move Link forward just a little bit. Um, it really doesn't matter what distance forward you move him, but just so the value changes. And then I'm going to scan for change value. And now we have 446. Going to do one more unchanged value scan. Yeah. And then I'll do change value one more time. Yeah, 446. I was able to get it down to around 300 last time. Um, obviously, this is still a lot to look through, but there is a way you can make it a little bit easier. Um, so, at least from the times I've done this before, the result is going to be somewhere near the middle. So I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down here. And then we're going to start looking through multiple at a time. So I hold the shift button here. So I can highlight a whole bunch of these at once. And then we're going to change the value of selected address. I'm going to change it to 1700. I'm going to copy this value and then hit OK. And there we go, right where we need to be. So one of these values that I just highlighted is the one, with, one that we need. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add all of these to, uh, to the address list down here. Expand this a little bit, and then we'll go through. I'm going to move Link around so these are not 1,700 anymore. And then go through these one at a time, set it to 1,700. And eventually, one of these is going to move Link. And there it is. So I'm going to delete all of these that aren't that address. Delete all those. Then delete all these. So this is Link's Z coordinate. Checking one more time that I didn't accidentally delete it. I didn't. Okay. So this is Link's Z coordinate. We're going to now add the Y and the X coordinate as well. So I'm going to copy this address where his Z coordinate is. 
I hit OK. And I'm going to addre addre add address manually. I'm going to change this to a 4. This will be his Y coordinate. And then I'm going to this up. I go ahead and rename this Havoc Y and Havoc Z. And then I'm going to add one more address. Same thing, but change the last value to a zero. And then this is going to be his X coordinate. Okay, so now all of these values. Um, I also need to change these to float. Let me do that. Float and float. There we go. Okay, so now we have Link's coordinates. If I change one of these, say negative 570, you'll see Link will move on the screen. So this is going to give us what we need in order to reset Link's position. So I'm gonna reload in front of this shrine here and go in, and then I'll show you how I'm saving and restoring his coordinates. Okay, so we have the coordinates here. I'm going to double click here and press copy. And then I'm going to right click, go to set hotkeys, and then create hotkey. I'm going to change this to set value to and paste the value here. Now for the hotkey, I'm going to use my controller and the same input that I used to restore the camera angle and uh, facing angle and so on. I'm gonna input the same thing here. So D-pad right and then start. And then I'm going to do that same thing for all of these. Need to right click, set hotkey, create hotkey, set value to this, and then D-pad right and start. And one more time, copy, okay. Right click, set hotkeys, set value to, and then D-pad right and start. And now you'll see, if I do this in game, Link will go back to his position, which is exactly what we need. Now, unfortunately, this is the unfortunate part with this. So, because this is an emulator, trying to find a pointer path back to these values is pretty tricky, if not impossible. So, at least at the moment, this whole process that I went through of finding his position and then setting the hotkeys and all of that, um, you'll have to do this every time you close and reopen the game. And also, every time that you want to save him to a new position, say I want to save him to this ledge over here, you will have to go in, copy the value, go to set hotkeys again, and then edit this, your new value. You'll have to do that for all three each time. So it is a bit tedious, but of course this is the early days of trying to task in this game, and I can assume it only gets better from here. Um, but I'll show you really quickly as well how the... Uh, how the script making works. That part is pretty straightforward. So I'll finish changing this last hotkey. And I noticed I nudged Link's angle a bit, but hopefully that won't matter too much for what I want to do here. Let's see if I can make it straightforward. Okay, so I have a script mostly written out here already um, but this one I'm just doing some wind bomb testing currently and for this um, specifically testing wind bombs this first one I want him to hold ZL but I also nudge the right stick so that the camera doesn't move from the side um, but in order to get this script to be read by Yuzu um, first of all it seems like you need this specific name I haven't 
tested around with this too much to see if I can use any different names. Um, but this is the specific one that I believe it looks for. So in Yuzu, you want to go to tasks and then configure tasks. And then uh, enable task features. I don't know if that's on by the, um, from the start, but you'll want to do that. And then also have the path here to where the task script is located. I, I think that was also filled in by default for me. Um, let me see. The, I'm trying to remember what the inputs are. So yeah, I usually don't use this menu, but when you update something in the script, like let's say I just want to make Link jump a bunch of times for, for some reason. Uh... X, 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 X. He'll be jumping like every frame here, except he'll be in the air, so he won't actually. Or every other frame. So you see the star next to the script, that means you need to save, so just control S. And now that you've saved, you need to refresh the script that Yuzu is reading. So you need to, uh, to reset as it shows here. So, so after you save a script, you want to hit control 6. Or press reset in the menu and then you'll want to press Control 5 or press start here in the menu and then the script will execute so obviously that didn't look like a whole lot but uh <laughs> that was the script being executed I'll get him to put the bomb away and see if I can get him to actually do something interesting I'm gonna get rid of all these save again I may need to nudge the camera an extra frame. So let me do the same thing here. It doesn't have to be the exact same value, but if I just nudge it again for an additional frame, I think it should keep it to the side. So I'm pressing D-pad right and start to put my camera to the side again. And let's see if we can run the script. So control F6 and then control F5. Okay. One more thing to do with this script. Gonna reset his position with the controller again. And then I actually need to hold a direction when I jump. I'm gonna just hold it directly left. Uh, doesn't have to be precise. I'm gonna save, click back on Yuzu, control F6, and then control F5. And there we go, scripted wind bomb. Yeah, if you're interested in setting this up and run into any difficulty, feel, feel free to message me on Discord and I'll try to help you out. I think tasking in this game is going to be really neat. And uh, even if it's just used for really basic stuff like ILs or really short segments, I think there's a lot of cool potential here. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.